Hey, it's Lisa, and welcome back to another episode of Nashville on the Rocks. Today, we're talking Loud Jams. Loud Jams is a very popular and highly anticipated event in the Nashville music scene. We discussed Loud Jams earlier in episode three with founder Tom Hurst. As sort of an expressive showcase and networking event for Nashville musicians, Loud Jams has been making heads turn for over a decade. Nashville on the Rocks has partnered with Loud Jams, and today we're going to be featuring some of the key players that help make this event thrive. We've also partnered with our friends at Uncle Nearest, Tennessee's own premium whiskey. We hope you like this feature, and please join us at the Woolworth Theater Monday, March 4th, in honor of some of these great musicians and a fantastic night of music. Cheers. All right. Yeah. Hey, DA. What's going on, babe? <laughs> Not much. Good to see you tonight. Man, it's good. Have I haven't seen studio. you in a while. You I know? know. I know. It's like two ships passing. It's like, don't we live in the same house? Yeah. You know, I, I thought we did. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> anywho. Anywho. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for a special episode of Nashville on the Rocks. So we are talking today about loud jams. Loud jams. Loud jams. And loud jams for all of you in the Nashville area will be Monday, March 4th at the Woolworth Theater. That's downtown. Um, I think we're really going to like it. Uh, doors are at 7. Show starts at 8. It'll probably be about a three-hour show, two and a half, three-hour show. Um, There's going to be a lot of musicians there, a lot of songs. Oh, my shit. God. So many musicians. So many musicians. And we are going to talk about some of those musicians today. Uh, six right. of them in particular. And then the founder, Tom Hurst. Tom Hurst. You can't say enough about that guy. I you know, know you and, like, and let me tell you a little story, Lisa. Like, when I first met Tom, I met him at Loud Jams. And uh, I swear to God, hmm. you know, you, we all know Tom Hurst is one cool motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. But I swear to God, I wonder if he remembers this. I'm going to ask him next time. I told him when I met him, I'm like, dude, I think you're like the coolest dude I met in Nashville. <laughs> I think that's what I told him. And I still believe that to be true. And I met him for like 10 minutes in a loud bar. So that says a lot about Tom Hurst and how cool he is. And uh, what a great dude. Well, I think that a lot of people would agree with you, babe. And uh, Tom is just really well known. Uh, and people just love him. And they just kind of rally around him. And he knows everybody. And that's the cool thing because he's always about hooking other people up and getting musicians together that he yeah, thinks he lifts people, people up know. around him. You know, he's always yeah. boosting people up. You know, he's so not selfish when he absolutely could be with the talent that's just, just dripping off him. You know, we've yeah. seen him play drums and how ridiculous it is. Well, and that's the thing you know? about one of the main things about Nashville in general that we've talked about several times on this show is that Nashville musicians really do like to pay it forward. Um, this is very cool. Really, yeah, it's really a town that's really different because there are so many good, talented people here, but it's really the important stuff is getting along with everybody, you know, and you know, the best you can, you know, and people are going to, you know, have issues from time to time. But yeah, considering the amount of talent that Tom has, he is always trying to shine a spotlight on someone and i love that yeah he's, yeah uh, he's, he's such just a, cool a super thing. super super guy mm -hmm. and everybody seems to gravitate towards him and you know that's why this loud jam thing is just uh always a success you know and all there's the, the top notch musicians in nashville always show up and they get up there and they just blow your mind every one of them they get up there and want it's like you know just like make sure you're ready to be to have your mind blown when you when you see these guys perform oh yeah every one of them there's you know? going to be so many people there uh monday march 4th uh i i have the song list and i i have the list i know who's going to be playing on the songs but um that's a secret i'm not going to tell you guys yeah, don't tell anybody no i'm not but i i'm gonna tell you right now it's really it's gonna be great it's gonna be no great doubt it's going to be awesome. But a uh, little background about Tom. So, uh, I mean, he came from Florida before he got to Nashville. And he was going back and forth from Florida to Nashville for a really long time. And that's how he got two of our other friends from the podcast, Chris Na Chris Nix and right. Michael J. And Love both those guys. Those guys are great. Mm -hmm. Super talented as well. And they were playing all in a band forever. And then Tom was trying to get both of them to come up here. So, I mean, Tom's been in this whole networking thing for a while. Like, he's always been playing music for, you know, since the dawn of time. And yes, I mean, he grew up... Uh, 
right in the Disney area. So then he like, as soon as he got out of high school, he was doing stuff at Disney and then he was like gigging all the time. And I really appreciate that about him because he he's so musical that like he has his master's in music and percussion and he teaches at two schools, you know, two colleges. One of them is TSU and but he's always mm. been gigging and it's ve- he tells that to younger musicians like you have to be out there like immersed in your scene and like meeting people, knowing people, like playing gigs, you know, you can't just, you know, kind of be tucked away. And I think that's really important. So like I know he tells his students like he's big on that with his students and it really pays off yeah, you know definitely he's always uh just just boosting people up just mm-hmm. another example of like him just being this building like not just a player but he's always building something mm-hmm. you know where every everybody around him seems to benefit and it's just a cool positive thing that he brings to nashville rock pop scene and yeah um not to mention i know the song list that you can't tell anybody but i just know it's always going to be something interesting because you know, you hear a lot of mainstream stuff, a lot of rock stuff, or a mm-hmm. lot of pop stuff, but he always seems to throw some deep cuts in there, you know? So it's like, if you yeah. you know if you know your music and you go to the show, you're gonna be really surprised about the stuff they're gonna pull out. Yeah, always. I, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic. And so, like, a little bit more about Tom's background, so then, like, coming to Nashville, like, that was, like, a huge thing for him, and then he started Loud Jams, like, I think he said in, like, 2011. Douglas Corner. Yeah, I think Douglas that's where Corner. I met him was mm-hmm. Douglas, they still had it there. Yeah. And I mean he, he was well already established at that point where he's playing with, you know, Tracy Lawrence and he was a drummer for the Backstreet Boys for 3 years, you know. And then he's played with uh, just a list of like so many other people, like a lot of country guys, um, you know, and his repertoire is so massive when it comes down to country artists that he's played with and then people other people he's done big tours with and then you know the whole like being a professor and then teaching and then he still plays gigs downtown on broadway and it's just really fascinating to see like just how multi-talented he is yeah it's just it's just endless with that guy and he's been doing it for a long time yeah for sure working guy yeah so we're really very fortunate uh, to know Tom and to have him on the podcast uh, on our previous episode. If you all haven't seen it, check out episode three of Nashville on the Rocks. Um, that's where we discuss with Tom Hurst more in depth about his life, uh, his music uh, endeavors, and um, everything that had to do with him getting started with Loud Jams and just moving forward. And, and he gives you like a really good uh, um, look into the people that are behind Loud Jams. Yes. Like who's helping him make this happen. Yes. Like Yvonne Smith, you know, mm-hmm. like she was a huge staple in putting this whole thing together. And she's an amazing singer, an amazing person. I mm-hmm. love Yvonne. Um, so many, so many people, you know, yeah. Josh Rosen, we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to talk about him a little bit later. Oh, sure. Um, but, you know, speaking of Tom, before we jump ahead and maybe, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we got some uh, music clips we, we want to play, right? Oh, yeah. So let's check out some Tom Hurst music clips of him doing his thing. Okay, right on. All right. Yeah, babe. Tom is a badass. Such a badass. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was so cool. And you're going to see more of him Monday, March 4th. So stay tuned, guys. Um, Also, I got to say, I got to give a little shout out to Uncle Nearest because we've partnered with them uh, for Nashville and the Rocks in general. They are one of our partners. We are drinking the 1884, which is I have right behind me. I'm doing a little 
just want to let them know that mine's already empty, so it must be really awesome. You know, yours was empty, and that's and that's funny because I got, got the these Martin um, glass going on, people. I know. Yeah, I got these uh, skull ice cubes off of Amazon. So you can make oh. you know, skull. I've had them for a while. They're not super super great, but for large cubes, as long you know, as are they tasty, babe? As for for what they are, you yeah. know, they're pretty cool to have in the glass. So, um, hmm. you know, that's something. But yeah, this is the 1884. I really, really enjoy it. And um, we just want to give a shout out to Uncle Nearest. Back to Loud Jams. Um, so the next person we're going to talk to or talk about is uh, a good friend actually of yours, has been for a long time, that just happens to know everybody that you know here and back home is Andrew Dixon. Andrew Dixon. I mean... One of the funniest, smartest dudes I know. <laughs> he talented really as hell. is. Um, if you're in a, if you have a bad day, go to Andrew Dixon's house. <laughs> this guy is like a positive vibe all the time. He's just full of energy, and he and when he plays drums, man, it's all like total energy. Yeah. But uh, uh, just a super dude, man. And I've known him since he was probably in high school well, when, when our wow. bands were playing up in Rochester, New York. Wow. You know, with the Smith brothers, man, Sean and Danny and stuff. And, and I know Ryan's down here. And That's crazy. Just talented family, the Smith brothers. But yeah, Andrew Dixon, man, killer drummer. Uh, known him for years. Mm-hmm. He, what's, when did he get here? 2000? He, uh, uh, no, he said he got here, I think, a, maybe it was early 2000s. I thought he said late 90s. No, nah, I don't think so. I th- oh, man, oh, actually, you might be right. I moved to New York City in 19, 1996. I think he moved and in 98 And I think him and Sean and Danny moved moved here probably around the same time did they all move together i think they did yeah as a band they had oh, a band cool. a killer band it was mental picture which was a killer band there were these kids man and they were <sighs> sean was singing his balls off <laughs> andrew was playing his balls off you know and danny and every, all those guys man are just so talented and uh yeah i think you i think 1996 they came up here oh that's and then funny. they changed the name of their band and then they started doing different things. Yeah. You know, they kind of, you know, I think uh, the Hillbilly Casino thing Andrew did. and the, I love that. You showed me clips of that band. So oh, awesome. Oh, I love that band. Yeah, they blew my mind. I've seen them over down on, uh, what's the name of that one club? Was it Layla's maybe or Robert? No, it wasn't Robert's. It was probably- On Broadway? It was on Broadway. They're right next to each other. Layla's and Robert's are next to each other. It might have been Layla's, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, they crushed that it, checks man. out. And like the singer was such a rock star. I was like, man, that guy is super- and, uh, super yeah, cool. Yeah, super cool. Like punk rock, you know. You know. Well, that's funny because Andrew's all about rock punk rock. Billy. Oh, yeah, total punk rock. That's like his thing. I mean, he does so many other types of music, but like that's like his his love. He's always, always talking about that, you know. And he's another guy that plays, you know, with bands and he plays on Broadway too, mm-hmm. which I love. Busy. I, yeah, busy. Keeping busy. Working musicians. And he's got a musicians. studio and he's, re- I think he's recording a, a punk band right now. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so he's always doing cool stuff in his studio. He's mm-hmm. talented as hell mm-hmm. um, and he he loves all sorts of music so you can talk to him about anything he's yeah. just really knowledgeable has a large vocabulary when it comes to genres of music and yeah he's just a, a, a awesome dude no yeah he's great and um you know i i think that there's something to be said for people that have been doing music for as long as he has in this scene you know what i mean it's like these are people that are you know they don't just they're they're in it for the right reasons. They're mm-hmm. in it for long term, you know. And mm-hmm. people like Andrew and people like Tom, they've been doing this since they were kids and they just they're still continuing and they have such successful careers in it currently and they've played with so many different people, you know. And then it just makes sense for them to come together and you know, do more stuff with Loud Jams. It's Absolutely. like of course you would ask Andrew Dixon to yeah, be yeah. at Loud Jams. Yeah, and he knows everybody too. Yeah. He's done so many cool things. But I think we have some clips of Andrew playing, you know, smacking the skins. We do. We do. You know, why don't we play a couple things of Andrew Dixon? That sounds great. All right, here you go.
right. down. What do you think of that shit? So good. So good. He is just so cool and super funny, like you said. And just to, you know. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The whole funny thing. I mean, everybody <laughs> I want, anybody doesn't know him. Check out his Facebook page, man. He does the best videos, man. I think my That's favorite. That's what I was going to say. Remember the Huey Lewis one he was doing and shit? Yeah. <laughs> or what about when he, uh, yeah, he was driving his car around the block, like at 30, like I blasting music. I, I don't know. He's got the best shit. Creative as hell. Yeah. And know? he shows up and he's, and he's hanging out with his dog, Willoughby. <laughs> and he's got a different shirt on, like a different rock shirt uh, every time. He he is so creative. And his uh, his selfie stick. <laughs> he made the selfie stick, you know, probably fly off the shelves. Everybody saw him use that thing in his Facebook videos and how effective it was. And uh, yeah, I'm no. sure they sold a billion because of his videos. I yeah, I, I absolutely. Um, but yes, and he is a, a great drum coordinator for Loud Jam. So yeah. Tom Puts really knew. Together. Yeah, he really knew what he was doing. Asking Andrew because Andrew knows so many people too, and that's just really cool. Our next uh, player, key player of Nashville Loud Jams, is uh, you know someone that I think that a lot of people in the Nashville scene no and in other areas too at Tyson Leslie oh my god yeah I'm telling you Tyson another person that knows everybody just knowing what that guy does probably on a daily basis just makes me tired that guy is like <laughs> probably the hardest working dude out there that guy is everywhere he makes it, everywhere he really does he's really consistent about keeping up with people keeping in contact with people uh putting shows together uh another like working musician like all the time just like work 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 and you know originally tyson's from missouri and then he moved to nashville in 2015 so right. i remember uh, when he first came down here yeah. yeah and that that was the same year that i got here for some reason i thought he had been here a little bit later but i guess i didn't i didn't meet him until a little bit after that and i remember meeting him at one of the uh, rock and roll residency shows yep yep absolutely mm -hmm. yeah that that, that and plus, then those guys, they brought the community together, the rock community. And that stuff was like that. such and, fun times. And that's how we meet these people, mm -hmm. you know, these people. Um, but as far as Tyson, man, not to mention, like, he's just one of those unique players. You know, you, you could tell he's just needs something to, you know, the play. Yeah. You know, he's and just like, in it. yeah, he's in it and he's got the drive. And mm -hmm. obviously, just he's everywhere. He's a hardworking dude. And uh, yeah. Sure. So, and I love that. And like, you know, he plays her Vixen, which I know he's super proud of because right. he's like the first and only male member that Vixen's ever had. So, and I think he does more than just uh, keys for that band. I think he probably handles some of their business side yeah. of it too. Like maybe I think that some manage, managing part, maybe I, I, I'm guessing, but I, that's, I think I heard that. But. Yeah. I think that we talked about that at some point. Uh, and he also does his own kind of like, networking show version of loud jams but the heavier one is rare hair rare hair here uh, in that's a huge one that people know yep and they always do like those deep cut metal stuff if you're a metal head man like you're gonna look at the song list and you're like holy shit man i haven't heard that song in mind blown yeah totally so yeah they always put on a a, a fantastic show yeah those um, are some fun shows yeah it's just another one of those things that he does and i just don't know where he gets the time and the energy to do it and it's, it's pretty fascinating to watch him do what he does mm -hmm. um but yeah so he's now part of loud jams and I, what is does he have a role as far as um is he coordinating with yeah Tom? i think that because they have a couple of keyboard players and carrie glenn like she right, is okay. the musical director so i think she does a lot of the stuff with keyboard players but him knowing everybody and as versatile as he is like i think that he kind of maybe helps her too I don't yeah, know if okay. he's. So I don't know if he has. I can see role. that though, but man, it's just like another thing that he does. It's like, mm -hmm. man, where does he find the time? But he must be a really good uh, organizer. Organizer, mm -hmm. like it, it takes like a lot of drive and tenacity and stuff, and like doing things when you're tired, but still being focused enough where you yeah. can get all these things done. And it's probably at the same time. You know, it's like I've seen some Facebook videos where he's driving and he's on the phone or he's like, you know, doing stuff, you know, and talking to his his fans and friends and family and stuff like that. But yeah, he's constantly probably filling the holes, you know, throughout his day with productive things, um, well, music. Like we said, he's just immersed in all of it, right. you know, and he's really good at keeping in contact with people and he's really good at networking. Yeah. And I think that people know that like he'll, He's reliable. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and that's important. That's important around here, man. Yeah, super um, important. But you know what? 
I think we got a couple clips that we're going to dig out of Tyson oh, doing his thing. What we do sure think? do. All right, let's check out Tyson doing, who knows, he might be playing guitar, he might be singing, he might be playing bass or drums. <laughs> who knows, he might be driving somebody's tour bus. Swamp of them hood girls, them good girls, straight masterpieces. Silent, wildin', living it up in the city. And got chucks on and sailing around. Gonna kiss myself, but so pretty. Come on, too hot. Hot damn. Call the police and the fireman. Too hot. Hot damn. Make a dragon want to retire, man. Too hot. Hot damn. Oh, say my name, you know who I am. Too hot. Hot damn. <laughs> man, man, with that money, break it down. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Well, girls hit you, hallelujah. Cause our town phone gon' give it to ya Cause our town phone gon' give it to ya Our town phone gon' give it to ya All right, that was Tyson Leslie, man, and uh, expect to see him at the Loud Jams doing the yes. same type of stuff. So good. All right, what's oh my up God. Next? Okay, so another person that we're going to talk about uh, that's very uh, a key player that has known Tom for such a long time, like they go way back, uh, is Rachel Rodriguez. And she's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think she was saying they were neighbors too, right? Yes. Were they the neighbors? Yeah. Yes, they were neighbors. And so because of that, like Tom introduced her to a lot of people as well because she's originally from Michigan and her just, she's another one that's been singing, you know, and and playing music for, you know, since she was a child and her father was a musician too. And so she grew up uh, singing traditional like mariachi music and country music. And she has a very soulful voice. Oh my God. Soulful is like an understatement. Beyond soulful. Yeah. Like (laughs) she's just got, I didn't want to cut you off. No, it's fine. She's like one of those singers, man. Like you can look at her as like a a blues singer, um, Mm -hmm. rock singer. I mean, I know she does other genres and stuff like that. We know her as a rock singer and the blues singer. Yeah. And from the loud jams, but she's got it all. Mm -hmm. She's got that killer range. Yeah. So she's got the power, the control. Yeah. Her vibrato is killer. And then she's Mm -hmm. got all those blues turns that, you know, the, how I love Doug Pennick and Angela Moore. She's like got that stuff in spades and she she makes it look so easy. Yeah. And she's just, yeah. And she just (laughs) delivers it with the artistry man she knows how to phrase man and i don't want to get too technical but man but she just blew my mind and i remember know who told me that hmm. he said keep an eye off for rachel man was matt farley ah uh, and we love matt because well, he's he, a he badass he's singer about. and drummer and the whole bit i can go off about him though but rachel is just like holy shit right uh, yeah, she totally like blew my mind the first time because i saw her at loud jams a while back and then she was singing a dio song and then yeah. I don't remember if I saw her that song, but then another Loud Jams, you guys sang a song. Like she backed you up on a song. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. Imagine having her backing me up. That's I know. Killer, uh, right. Well, and the thing is, is so and I've seen her uh, perform at Acme a bunch, too. So when I saw her, I was just like watching her and I'm like, man. So the from what I know speaking to rachel so because she grew up doing all that different type of music like with her dad and everything when she moved to nashville like i know she loves rock so she took the country she took you know her latino heritage and she her mariachi singing and she kind of developed her own voice so Mm -hmm. she doesn't really sound like anybody but she just sounds badass you know what i mean she's got this you know the grit that i love you know she's got the grit and the power and you know like i'm such a fan of rachel like i i seriously yeah, like she could love take, everything she, she could take her artistry of like just how she can like and just look at a song and just like do it her way yeah but just make it sound so right you yeah know? it's like I, I just really admire her and just what she can do she and, just uh, sounds like she could rip someone's balls off and she probably has <laughs> <with that voice. laughs> and, yeah like I, we can just go on and on about how how amazing she is and uh but yeah she always lights up the room yeah you know no say see everybody else looking around yeah everybody's just like holy shit you know seriously so So yeah she's really something she she is and i think we got a couple of clips from her too yeah i mean oh man these are good clips too i wish the (laughs) audio was better though but we've been digging out through youtube on digging them up 
Um, but we're gonna we're gonna go into that Dio song. I think you were talking about "Long Live Rock and Roll." I think Please, it was Rainbow, let's do right? it. And then the other one is "Jane" by yes. Jefferson Starship. Let's yes. check that shit out. Here All we right, go. Rachel Sounds good. Rodriguez. I told you so. That was badass. All right. Who's up next, Lisa? Okay. So the next person that is on the list um, is a, if you guys have been to Loud Jams before or you know Tom, you're going to know Josh Rosen. Like he's been there since day one. Yeah. It's like every time I I saw Tom and Loud Jams, he was always there playing the keys. Always. Always, he's been in there. Like he's one of the he's one of the early guys, right? Like, like yeah, help him build the whole thing, the foundation. Yes, that's true. Tom was saying that Josh has been on the roster since pretty much day one, and I think that that's something to be said because he's another another one of those people where he's so good at what he does, and he's so talented, and you can just tell because he likes all the deep cuts too. So Genesis is his favorite band. You know, he loves prog rock music he loves metal like he went to berkeley college of music he went to boston uh too to study for communication but he went to berkeley music he's from manhattan so like he grew up i think just kind of really a study studying music and being a student of music so he comes at it from a different angle but he is just very very good at what he does and he connects very well with people and he's very like tactful you know what i mean and what yeah. he does and i think he he really lets it rip you know but it's like he knows what he's doing you know you yeah, watch he's him he's a thoughtful dude and when you, you yeah, get a, when you it. talk to josh i feel like you get a sense of a guy who knows what's up what you, the you, music is yeah you can tell you can tell he just has a deep knowledge of his instrument number one but just of music in general like mm-hmm. he could probably play any style he, i mean he, i know he went to school i don't know exactly what he went to school it, as far as the music maybe it's a theory or mm-hmm. whatever but uh he can apply himself in so many different scenarios you know you see him up on on the stage you know and, and it's obvious and that's why josh comes you know highly recommended you know mm-hmm. you need a keyboard player and not you know not only as a keyboard player and just a guy who could play his instruments so good um he's a great songwriter too i've been checking out his stuff on youtube i know he wrote a couple songs and can't remember the other guys the cast of characters he had sing or perform them but he's like the songwriter well i don't doubt it and not to cut you off but i don't doubt it like that to me of course he would be a great songwriter you know yeah i could totally see that happening and so yeah him and tom go way back i don't exactly remember how they know each other i don't know if it was just kind of a networking thing where like tom got to know josh but like josh is mad cool i i loved hanging out with josh and like kind of getting to know him a little bit yeah me too because you Mm -hmm. know and another 
little weird thing is that like when I was talking to Josh, he, he reminds me of somebody that would be on my mom's side of the family. Like he's my long lost cousin or something. Oh my God. He is, kind of does. Am I right? Yes. So I thought, and I, and it just occurred to me like just recently, That's you know, after you the last that. time we talked. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of neat. So I, I felt like I was around familiar, comfortable people. Yeah. You know, familiar cool vibes. Sweet yeah. Dude. So, a sweet so. guy, uh, very talented. So y'all check out Josh Rosen. He will obviously be there. Uh, and again. I'm gonna, and I think I got a couple clips for y'all. I know you do. You know, and I'm gonna do my best to dig them up, man. As far as the audio, I'm not sure how the audio will be, but let's check these things out. All right, let's go for All it. Right. Well, that Why was don't. fucking awesome. Fuck yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're going to drop the F-bomb, people. If you know me, it's like I like to use that word. And if you know me, I don't, a point. I don't care. So I use it all the time. Yeah, she lets me use it. So that's why we got married. <laughs> that was it. Everybody <laughs> else said, dude, clean up your act. I was well, like, fuck you. I think, I think it also was because that you sang the fat bottom. No. What was it? Fat bottom woman song? Oh, by uh, farm. Spinal Tap? Yeah. Oh, Sex Farm Woman? Sex Farm Woman. Sex Farm Woman. <laughs> Crouching in your pee patch. That did it for me. That was it. Hosing down your barn door. <laughs> Poking your hay. If you all wonder how we got together. It sounds better as a ballad, though, right, babe? When, <laughs> when I was singing into your ear hole. With a guitar. <laughs> Uh, Crouching in oh your pee God. patch. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Oh, what was the other one? Uh, um, when? Bothering your livestock. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> babe, you bother my livestock all day long. Oh, my God. Come on, babe. Bothering the livestock. Sex farm woman. <laughs> Sex farm woman. Oh. oh, I love that band. All right. <laughs> all right where were we? I'm sorry about that. Let's clean up the, let's clean the show up, babe. See, we got this. Uh, no, let's just be wild. Let it run free. All right, let's do it. All right, so we have one more key player to talk about, and that is going to be Janelle Means. Ooh. Man, no. So amazing. Uh, there's not enough Man. things that I can say that I like. I know. I feel like we're being her. boring because we're always like just gushing about these. But man, I'm telling you, man, all you got to do is like. No, see, you, see her sing. No, that's you, what I'm, you have to check her out. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but like her and Rachel. I've seen them perform so many times and uh, like when I worked at Acme and the various bands that they would be in and I've, I've, they've given me so much joy just like listening to them. They're, they're so, and they both have like a, like a project together. They're called the Magenta Expression and the whole thing that they do is they take um, everything that they've learned about stage presence and, you know, mic checking and like um, I, they put a lot of psychology behind it, too, because Janelle is getting her master's or her doctorate in psychology. So no all about the creative side, like and they really take people in and kind of kind of mentor them. And I think that that's something that's super cool. And it's really cool. And you yeah. can tell, man, they, they, they would be great teachers, man, because if, yeah. if you watch them sing, no, you know, they're great singers. But they're great performers. Yeah, for you know what sure. I'm they bring an energy to the stage and they just make you feel good. And it's like all, it's probably just experience and just, yeah. you know, just being good at what you do and feeling confident. So I just think that they would be great teachers for people who want to do what they do and maybe don't feel the confidence and they don't know, you know, yes. that type of thing. And I know that like Rachel, she has helped Tom like get a lot of um, other singers because Tom doesn't, you know, really work with that as much he's always asked other people to kind of you know other singers to do that for him which makes sense and uh but he she brought janelle and that's i think right. that's okay. such a good pairing together so like and janelle also like tyson started her own group like uh 
soul vibes. So that is like her her baby, like just like how loud jams is for Tom. Wait, what was that club right down the street? Um, our our neighbors own this bar, right? Weren't oh, they, did yes. they bring soul vibes uh, there? Vinyl vinyl tap? No, well, mm, I, I thought somebody like I thought maybe Janelle was saying it. Uh, they were talking about like a writing or something going on I don't know if it was soul vibes Uh, I can't remember they're saying it got a really cool sound in there too it just sounds great to, to perform in there even though it's not a huge like arena or anything but it's like it's like a really cool vibe there more intimate i think sure yes and for those of you that are local to nashville or want to visit nashville like i highly recommend that too because it's a staple of east nashville you know it's a cool vibe vibey kind of place and they have music and you're gonna get great music if you go there and you're gonna see awesome people so i've just I love Janelle because her voice is super soulful. I know she grew up singing in church. Um, I knew that uh, she was directing like some things in her church for a long time. So, I mean, I think that's where she first started. But just right. her continuation of just everything she's done and just her creating like something else, like a networking group for something she really enjoys, I think is just a testament, again, to how we go back to talking about Loud Jams with Tom Hurst and how much he's just influenced people. You know? Yeah, it's like he just brings these people together. So it's, if, it, if it wasn't for Tom, we wouldn't know these people. That's what it feels like, right? No, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's like you he know? just kind of brings people around and mm-hmm. introduces people to each other. And it's and, just, just, just a, a and, cool thing, man. It's loud jams. And I think the cool, the, the uh, in addition to that, I think the great thing about Janelle is that, I mean, she's a very wonderful person and she's so talented. And then she takes what she has and like her creative side and she merges like her creative, you know, the psychology behind it with her creative music. And I think, I don't know, that really makes me feel some type of way. I really enjoy that. So I know we got some good clips of her and I can't wait to see them. Yeah, let's check out some Janelle doing some killer stuff. Let's do it. All right. That was super awesome. That was a killer song. That was a killer song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love Kiss. it. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kiss. I gotta get a little higher, I think, though, <laughs> but my voice is feeling really low. <laughs> no, you're fine. Low. And I, I just want to tell everybody, so like after Loud Jams takes place, which to remind y'all again, um, Loud Jams takes place Monday, March 4th. It is a free show, a free event, a free music event. So y'all should come. Uh, it is going to be at the Woolworth Theater downtown and it the doors open at seven show starts at eight it'll probably go on for about two and a half three hours don't quote me on that but i think that that's probably a safe bet and the reason why we're talking about these people today is because we've been in touch with all of them since we talked to tom from the beginning and some of these people there are others but some of these people um are key players in like kind of the loud jams now and what's it what it's evolved to for this show and then we're gonna have them back on the nashville on the rocks in a later time yeah, more so on a one-on-one deep yes. deep dive interview which we love to do to find out more about these people more in depth yeah like a but, post um, show yeah a post really reflection cool to have these guys on so i just want to remind you again that we are sponsored by uncle nearest so i'm gonna show you again do we have the address or do we uh, or, uh a Woolworth? That? Yeah. So the Woolworth Theater used to actually be like a department store. So it is the Woolworth on Fifth. And um so it's downtown, you know, uh, Fifth Avenue. Uh it's in between like church and God. Uh it's a little bit past Broadway. Like it's towards the state capitol, 
you can't really miss it. So Fifth Avenue, uh, they just call it Woolworth to, on to Fifth. Go to Broadway and ask somebody. Yeah. They'll, just, they'll just go, hey, it's over there. Just ask somebody. It's around. Um, yeah. I just want to intro- introduce you all to Penny. Uh, this is my... Uh, she's actually real, everybody. <laughs> she's real. She's real. <laughs> she's real. <laughs> she's real. We, we didn't know she was real. <laughs> We thought she was just a little stuffed animal, but yeah. it turns out she's real. Yeah, uh, and it, it, she really does have that uh, that long tongue, babe, right? <laughs> yeah. We thought that was fake. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and she's our little uh, Nashville on the rocks hellhound. So, uh, she's the underdog. She's the underdog. Because here we are in Underdog Studios, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, she's a good girl. So we're Underdog Studios. Uh, thank you again. Um, just remember, our sponsor is Uncle Nearest. Uh, they're right here, guys. Check them out at Uncle Nearest. They are Tennessee's uh, empty. premium whiskey. Um, so good. Uh, DA's empty. You can mm. get more of this. They have a rye. They have an 1856, and they have an 1884. But uh, So I just want to thank Tom Hurst, Loud Jams, uh, Uncle Nearest. This is going to be such a great event. Uh, babe, you did such a good job. I want to thank you, too. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. we're, we're recording this? Yeah. I don't know, oh something. My God, well, why'd you tell me that? Jeez, I, you know, I would have put something <laughs> on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even wearing pants, babe. Well, that's yeah. okay. It's after uh, COVID, so no one wears pants oh, man. from well, home that, anymore. This is fun. This is really fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. All right, Penny, say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. All right. All right. We'll see everybody at Loud Jams. Hey guys, you've just watched another episode of Nashville on the Rocks. And if you've liked what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks. We'll see you next time.